Aloha, I'm Representative Kimberly Pine and thank you for joining us for Time with Kimberly Pine. Today we are going to continue to talk about veterans issues which is very important here at the state capitol and we're very honored to have Patricia Matthews who's from the VA as well as Noe Foster who's the CEO and of the strategist. Welcome ladies. Thank you. Well I want to thank you so much uh, and Patricia, I do want to say that you're the public affairs officer of the VA Pacific Islands Healthcare System, so we get that correct. Uh, but I want to thank you so much for coming here today, and and we are having an increase of, of, of new veterans uh, that are staying in Hawaii that are recently returned from um, uh, the Gulf War, the Gulf of the, the Iraq and Afghanistan War, and uh, we have about 10 to 13,000 veterans, at least on my side of the island. Mm -hmm that need services and and you folks are working really hard to push a veterans court here at the state capitol. Tell us a little bit about how that came together. Well the veterans treatment court it's actually a, a house bill that 2798 um, we knew that there was a need in the community to uh, address the issues of veterans who were returning back and getting involved with law enforcement issues. Uh, there are a hundred other veteran treatment courts across the country. The first one was established in New York in 2008 and um, they've been very successful. So basically what it does is it allows veterans the opportunity to meet uh, in a specialty court and um, they have mentors there available, uh, people assigned from the VA that help track and evaluate their situation uh, as to whether they need mental health treatment, uh, substance abuse treatment, things that the VA offers in addition to what our community partners support with as well, like Nor Noe's organization. Um, but this basically gives a veteran a second chance, get to the root of the cause of why they've been involved in several issues with the law, get them treated. Uh, it's usually a year-long program uh, run by the judici judiciary and um, at the end of that program, once they successfully complete everything, then they don't have a criminal record. Um, that avoids a lot of other problems. Once you do have a criminal record, you've been incarcerated, that's not really uh, a form of rehabilitation and it dominoes into unemployment and other perhaps mental health issues, substance abuse issues, and sometimes even suicide. So we want to help the veterans and the community out. So Noe, one of the arguments here uh, at the state capitol is why should we treat veterans different from the rest of the population? That's a good question. Working in a war zone and living in a war zone is hazardous to your health, bottom line. Um, what was really revealing to us was a family court judge here in Hawaii who said without exception over the last several years he's seen a real spike in the number of military members that have come before him with a family member who has placed a TRO or requesting a TRO. What was really concerning to the judge was even without knowing the background of the case, just watching the person in court, he could tell by the courtroom behavior that this was someone who had recently returned back from um, a deployment. And often the wife would say, I don't know who this is. I don't know where my husband has gone. And he felt very, um, challenged because the level of the violence that the wife was describing was really at the high end, a 9 or 10, he said. Mm -hmm. And at the end, the wife, as well as the husband, were in such a predicament that he felt helpless. And, and at that point, when, once we heard that, we started to do a bit more research. And nationally, it is a trend. Um, trauma resulting from combat really um, produces some behaviors, high-speed driving, heavy drinking, binge drinking, a lot of violence. The Veterans Treatment Court really helps us to intercept that and redirect um, the veteran to appropriate services, saving the state lots of cost. Uh, millions of dollars can be saved by instituting this, and more importantly, families can be saved. Now, what does your organization do in this bigger picture? Uh, the Strategist, we're a consulting firm that works on military reintegration issues. One of the uh, programs that we've been working on is the Veterans Court. Another project that we've been working on is with homeless female veterans and helping them get in, get employment. Have you seen an increase in homeless female veterans needing these services? Yes, nationally the trend is the fastest growing population of homeless veterans is female veterans. Many who have children, their single parents, recently returned back from Afghanistan and Iraq. 
And are there the, their issues different from male veterans? They're more pronounced. Mm -hmm. It's um, they're experiencing a lot of the same trauma, uh, as well as injuries to the knees, to the back, uh, traumatic brain injuries, post-traumatic stress disorder. But it's often compounded because they're single moms. The divorce rate is much, much higher for female veterans than regular veterans. They often come back without a family support system. Now, Patricia, what we've done a lot better as Americans to treat our veterans once better than the Vietnam War, uh, to make sure that we honor them and give them better health attention. What is the VA doing uh, to help our, our, our new veterans and people returning from war? Um, from an unfortunate situation in the past of, of how our Vietnam veterans in particular were um, not treated as they should have been. We've learned a lot and they've been some of our greatest advocates. Um, increasing benefits, obviously, the awareness, the funding. Um, we have unprecedented funding the last few years across the VA, uh, but we're playing catch up from when these wars started. Um, and I think a lot of our veterans are still unaware that there are benefits out there for them. So having programs like this is very helpful to us. Um, we're not able to pay for this type of publicity, so it limits us, but I think a basic thing that we can do is let people know that we are available, that to call and check, write their 1-800 numbers, websites to find out uh, what services are available to them and what benefits that they have earned. And a lot of times people have said, well, I'm not a veteran, I'm not of retirement age, I didn't serve in combat, um, I'm a guard member, reserve member. If you've served in the military active duty, and you've completed your service, have a DE-214, you are a veteran, you are eligible. Um, that again, could just be one tour, right? Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah, just one tour. And um, depending on your personal situation, you ha may have more or less um, benefits. And a lot of people also don't know that the VA, you have the healthcare side of it, you have um, the benefit side, which is your uh, GI Bill that you use, the education, the um, home loan, the compensation and pension for any injuries you may have obtained, um, and then also we have um, the, the cemetery and the burial services, and then we also have the, the vet centers. They're kind of their own special entity there. And you have yeah. a new one opening this summer? Yes, in Kapolei okay. there uh -huh. is one that's opening up any day now, so we'll make sure to let you know. But we also have a mobile vet center mm -hmm. that just arrived. It's the first one in Hawaii, and that gives the opportunity to um, partner up with uh, local organizations, nonprofits, other parts of the VA, and go out to the community. And even here, you know, where it's a very populated island, there's still so many remote parts or even on the college campuses where students are out there, they don't know that they're actual mm -hmm. veterans. So this is going to enable us to do outreach across the island and hopefully um, we'll be able to show a need for more of these on the other islands as well. So tell us about the outpatient clinic that you're going to open at the former Hawaii Medical Center West. Uh, Having more facilities in the health industry is very important for the Leeward Coast. After the closing of, of the hospital and the emergency room, we really are in a kind of a semi-crisis right now, trying to help everyone who needs uh, medical attention. How will uh, this clinic help uh, reduce the traffic flow to Tripler and other areas? So there it's expanding services out to the west side, of course. Uh, we have a lot of veterans there. and. Um, this is going to help the community a lot. Of course, the, the, some of the services are limited, mm -hmm. but uh, within the next few months, then we expect to be opening that up and um, expanding it as the need arises, And but we just want get to it, get it going so we can start seeing our veterans. And the Ohana Warrior Clinic is in Kailailoa, mm -hmm. or formerly Barbara's Point, and they're not full yet. And so we want to announce today, right, mm -hmm. to uh, other veterans uh, that you don't have to go to Tripler. There are many services over there, and uh, the, uh, the clinic uh, has multiple services, re regular basic medical services, so you don't have to go to Tripler and fight the parking. Uh, so uh, we do want to mention that. Mm -hmm. Now, what, where do you go from here? Um, you also have a, a Women's Veterans Task Force. Tell me about your first meeting. Our first kickoff was so uh -huh. exciting. The energy in the room, Patricia and I are both on that. Uh -huh. 
Women's Veterans Task Force was just electric. Mm -hmm. um, it was really a output from the Women's Caucus, so thank you for your involvement in that. We are focused on women who have served in the military, both um, who are still in the military and those that, that have um, served at some time and are looking to champion policy changes and program changes that benefit women veterans. What are the, some of the things that we can do better? Uh, I think we're, we are learning that there are new issues that we probably didn't think about. What are the kind of things that you folks discussed at this first meeting? Um, one in particular is having women at the table. Mm -hmm. When policies are being considered, new processes, new buildings, as an example of the new health centers, to have women at the table so that women's health issues can be uh, a consideration, not an afterthought, but really at the table. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a fascinating group of women. You have all eras represented, all backgrounds, all services. Um, I don't remember the last time I was in a, a room of such incredible energy and experience. Um, I think it was unanimous that we agree one voice is very important, making sure that we empower people. I know people use that word a lot, but um, ensuring that women have the information and the tools necessary to, again, utilize their benefits to uh, exercise their, their voice, whether it be in legislation or other um, areas, even how healthcare is provided. So we're going to speak as one voice, learn about each other's backgrounds, and learn about what resources we have already available to us, and then start this grassroots effort in getting information out, people involved and engaged. So we're really excited about that. What's really thrilling is we think that we can have an impact not just here locally, mm -hmm. but really on a national level. Hawaii is really in a place to prototype a lot of new uh, processes and policies and we think it's our role to to expand that voice and look at it on a national level as well. So we will be involved in just state issues or, or both federal and, and state? Was that what you folks talked about? We talked about both. We're still growing and figuring out what we want to make sure that we're also task oriented and, and accomplish some things first and foremost for Hawaii and then um, hopefully those issues that we tackle and programs that we help to implement will um, inspire other states and the country to take a look at women veterans issues. Now Noe, what inspired you to start your organization? I served as a medic in the Air Force. Oh, okay. And my background really is in health care, mm -hmm. um, looking at the intersection of government health care programs, Medicaid, Medicare, and military health is an area of special interest for our firm and being able to work with the VA and Patricia and Dr. Hastings has been a real, um, we think that we're in the right place at the right time to offer our help and support. Can you tell me some stories of some of the people that you've, you've helped without maybe saying their name? Oh, certainly. Yeah. Uh, with Power Up, which is the project specifically to help homeless female veterans with jobs, We've had women of all ages. We've had young women in their early 20s who are single moms. The only job they ever knew was in uniform. Mm -hmm. And now, um, after a, a divorce, oftentimes, you know, they've been custody battles. They're trying to rebuild their lives and find a job, but they have very young children. Um, we've been able to help women like that. We've seen women on the opposite end of the spectrum, women who are grandmothers who devoted 20 some odd years to military life have retired and after a divorce find themselves making, having a difficult time making ends meet, find, keeping a roof over their head. And oftentimes women veterans, as in as most cases with females that are homeless, they're hidden, they're invisible. You know, they find a way to blend in and they're not in the traditional places. They're not in the shelters and in the emergency transitional um, places. They're in their cars or they're couch surfing with friends. We're at a, our country's been at war for the last decade. You know, we think that we have a part to play in trying to make things better, to, to be an agent for change. Do you think we need to bring more awareness to the, to the fact that there are these services for, for veterans out there? I know that when I used to be an employee of U.S. Vets, which is the, were, uh, for former homeless veterans, are, are the people that went out in the field say that getting a, a homeless veteran to come in to get help is, is so hard because 
their training has been so intense and they were trained to survive any type of situation and they almost feel embarrassed mm -hmm. that they've, 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 they've fallen mm -hmm. and they keep telling, I, I can do this myself, I can do this myself. Do you find those same situations in, in your field? Yeah, I think um, that is the pride that you feel when you're a military member and you've served your country honorably and most people have completed their service with honorable discharges and then for whatever set of circumstances that got them to where they are, they're very reluctant. And we have some employees actually that went through the program, went through US Vets, um, which we partner with, and they have a, a great team there. And they model after you know what we do in the homeless program as well, where you're looking at the whole person, mm -hmm. looking at um, addressing issues that perhaps existed before the military, mm -hmm. compounded by their military service. Um, accessing the benefits that they're entitled to while giving them a sense of pride and purpose. So uh, one gentleman mentioned that when he heard himself being called Mr. So-and-so yeah. that he's like, wow, I'm, I'm a mister. And he started standing a little bit taller and prouder. And um, I know the VA and, and NOAA and U.S. Vets, other organizations, um, they want the veteran to feel that, that sense of, of um, respect um, that they've earned and um, I think that with the community awareness and letting people know even if they don't know exactly where to send them to um, point them to US vets or to the VA that there's somebody there that will be able to figure out where they need to go what they're entitled to um, but even more so you know we have the homeless population that's been chronically homeless mm -hmm. and then we have the people that are just became homeless or in danger of being homeless mm -hmm. but that transition from the military to civilian life it's it's overwhelming for a lot of people especially in this economy mm -hmm. so trying to prevent that is what we're also focusing on what and numbers should veterans call for your organization and the VA if they need some help uh, for our, our organization mm -hmm. power up if it's a female homeless veteran she can call 366-7394 so for us, uh, they can call my office, and that would be 433-0049, and then listening to what it is that they need, then I can make sure they get to the right office, because it's a, it's a very big facility there, so I want to make sure that they're not dialing a lot of different numbers. So Now, Patricia, what are some of the, are you seeing any new issues that you haven't seen before, or an increase in a particular issue that, that was a little unexpected? I think, um, basically just the increase that's gradually happening with people returning from service and um, I hope that we're doing something right with with the outreach because they're coming there are more people coming um, and I think the stigma has been reduced as far as getting treatment um, mental health services counseling services substance abuse services again to prevent from having um, a long-term issue I think we're seeing a lot more people come to ask for help and um, not having the hesitation they did before. So I think people's reaction to war, it's um, a normal reaction to an abnormal situation and um, people are seeing that and starting to understand that and even within our own organization, educating people and letting them know um, what we have available out in the community is important. Um, but no new trends per se, but just an increase of certain things or an increase in enrollments, um, an increase for requests for especially women veterans. Um, that was something that we, I haven't been here that long, but um, the need wasn't there before and now there is and so it's growing mm -hmm. significantly. How many more. female veterans are there in, in Hawaii? In total there's about a, over 11,000, oh, but we think wow. that number is an underestimation mm -hmm. because they would have to have um, bought into veteran services. There's probably a lot of um, females who have served in the National Guard or reservists that haven't self-identified as veterans yet but would really qualify based on their service. Now, what do you hope uh, will happen in the future? What is your dream for uh, uh, the female veterans issue? Mm. If you could That's have it <laughs> Uh, first, I think one of the, the key components of my dream would be that we could mobilize uh, trauma-informed community. Mm -hmm. So 
Hawaii is unique. Twenty percent of our population is somehow connected to the military, but wouldn't it be great if employers and educators and um, communities and churches would all be more aware of going to war changes things for people, and if we could create an environment where our veterans could come back, defrost, and move gently back into the lifestyle that they had. If we had that kind of community, I think we would be able to help m promote healing from mm -hmm. um, all of that. That's one, one big thing. Yeah, I, I agree with that one because it, it just helps everyone. The entire community benefits from that. In addition to that, I would love to see um, bridging the gap between Department of Defense and VA. Mm -hmm. So as people are transitioning out, um, a lot of times the, the community that's not too familiar with military veteran issues think that they're one and the same, but mm -hmm. they're two completely different missions. And if we can start addressing things before people um, leave the military, complete their service, then we're able to minimize uh, the issues that exist for them, the challenges. Um, planting that seed early on in their career uh, five years, 10 years, 20 years goes by very quickly, but if they know when they're younger and keep hearing the message that mm -hmm. once they do finish their service, there is the VA. You do have the, um, like now, the post 9-11 GI Bill, which offers so many opportunities for people in education or training and um, or even for their spouses or children, and a lot of people don't know. Vocational rehabilitation, uh, it's endless, and it's just getting the people to, to sit down and come up, and unfortunately, up where we're located, it's a little challenging due to parking, but there's always someone willing to listen and to help. So, and you have an event coming up. We do. Want to it's tell us called about it? A Women of Power Stand Down. And in military terms, a stand down is when troops come off of the battlefield or com combat zone uh, for rest to reboot, recharge. This is the first time in Hawaii that we're having a female exclusive stand down. The first part of the morning will be focused on employment, how to. Um, transition back from a military career into a civilian career. And then the afternoon session after lunch will be spent on women's health issues after combat. What's really thrilling is it'll be female veterans teaching other female veterans. And I think that's the most valuable part, is to see women who have been there, done that, and who've worn the uniform talk about their lessons learned and help other uh, women veterans who are going to walk that road as well travel a little safer. That sounds fantastic. And before we leave, we have a few minutes left, what would be some of the warning signs that you can help veterans to decide when they need to come in either to the VA to get some help or, or to your organization? I think um, if a veteran has served in Iraq or Afghanistan, they should assume that things will change. Mm -hmm. um, it's very likely we, we know one in five uh, veterans that are in combat can serve, uh, can return back from service with a traumatic brain injury. To assume that there's going to be some physical changes and to build in that um, rehealing, um, reintegration process back into your lifestyle. Don't expect when you come back on day one after, you know, everyone's welcomed you with the banners and parades that you can bounce back in. It, plan out your re, uh, readjustment yourself and make a plan as a family to readjust back into life. And ask uh, when that readjustment is happening, ask for help, you know, with the VA and the community, the vet center, because a lot of times you have, especially younger spouses, you've had multiple deployments um, and there's a period of getting to know each other again or fit, where do you fit in in the whole system of your community, your family, especially if you're leaving the military. Um, changes in behavior, irritability, forgetting things, um, a disconnection, people withdrawing. Sometimes the, the changes are very subtle. Sometimes they're very obvious. Um, but I think the family members, whether, whether they're the parents, the husbands, the wives, um, read up. We have a lot of great websites on the va.gov. Um, and, and for example, National Center for PTSD has a lot of information for family members and caregivers so that you can start spotting signs of, um, warning signs of things, just change in behavior. And you want to address the issue with community support in a safe environment as soon as possible. Um, those are the greater chances for, for success right away uh, rather than letting things just build and build. And we want to save our families. We really do. So. 
So the most yeah. important thing is uh, when you leave military service, you should probably just check in with the VA right away mm -hmm. to yes. learn what services are available. And uh, you can even just go to college and they can help you with yes. all your benefits there uh, while you're transitioning and, and trying to, to, to look into new things. Well, I want to thank both of you so much for educating us today, especially about the female veterans issue. Uh, we know as a community we're going to have to to do a better job of uh, making sure we understand this issue and I certainly will support you here at the legislature so thank mahalo you. for coming. Thank you. Well I want to thank all of you for joining us for uh, this session of Time with Kimberly Pine and again if you are a, a new veteran or hey you've been a veteran for a while and you've never checked in with the VA please do so. Uh, you have uh, earned of many benefits and our country wants to now serve you. So thank you so much for all of your service and as the only military wife here at the state capitol, I am proud of the military and, and proud of all your service to our country. Mahalo for joining us and aloha. Good job. Thank you. <laughs>